Hello, hello, welcome everyone. Today we're gonna talk about the second chapter of our Ishida book, and this chapter is titled The Bishop Exchange Formation. What is going to happen is we go for our Ishida shape and they immediately exchange the bishops, which is gonna give us a little bit of trouble into bringing normal Ishida shape because of this particular bishop drop. So let's start. Here we have two options. We could take it with the silver, but we're gonna look into a rook takes variation. Silver, of course, is a possible option. Following that, you know, the other side could develop naturally, then we would follow naturally as well. But today we're gonna learn what to do in case they go the aggressive line. So they're threatening to attack, yeah, to promote both of those squares at the same time, making a horse. So unless we have a equally threatening drop, then they're going to win by getting a horse, yeah? We have actually this drop, which protects this square while counter-attacking over there. So the idea is, if they protect, we protect. They promote, we promote. And technically our promotion is a little bit better, because we're threatening to take this knight, as well as pick up more pounds on the way. This could be a possible development, but we're going to go a defend variation today. The reason why we move the silver here is because we go for the mino shape, yeah? The silver goes here, the king would be here. Uh, if we were to go, for example, here, this would be a little bit awkward because if they play normal static rook shape, this would be the wrong castle. So we try this, and now, as you can see, their bishop cannot promote anymore, our bishop cannot promote anymore. Uh, they're gonna offer bishop exchange. And the reason why is because this move creates it a weakness over here. So they immediately would like to drop a bishop here, and this is going to be the main topic of this line. So the first thing you need to know is that in the past, um, a popular line that I also learned was to come back with the rook here, bishop exchange happening, they drop the bishop, and we counterattack on the a big diagonal. So this was uh, normal, yeah, here we attack the lens, so they're gonna protect it, we can take the rook, and we can trap their bishop. Here they have this uh, interesting looking bishop drop that's gonna protect their bishop. If they take, you can see that our rook is a little bit in trouble, so we're not gonna take and again we'll follow up. Um, the main point of this variation is that this rook is really hard to use, so the author doesn't recommend this variation. I found like one variation of the computer just to prove that fact. Um, if they develop the knights, well, you can see that indeed this rook is stuck here for a very long time, so perhaps we wouldn't want that. So instead of uh, going back with the rook to 7-8, the author is recommending this line, where we take the bishop directly, and then push the 1-6 pawn. The meaning of 1-6 pawn is to make an escape route for our lands. Today we're gonna look at variation number one, where the enemy is going to answer. The main attack that they would like to do is to drop the bishop, force our lens to move upward, and then counter attack on the edge using this knight. This is going to be their main plan, yeah? So if they were to do it right now, immediately jumping the knight, we can actually push this pawn again, making one more square for the lens escape here. Therefore, they're gonna push one for pawn to limit our lens movement. And we don't have a way to like protect this square, we will try to move the king closer, but they're gonna drop the bishop anyway. We escape with the lens, and at each step we're gonna ask ourselves the question, what if they go for direct attack with the knight? So in this case, if they were to jump here, the book is recommending a very complex variation, uh, but computer simply says that bishop 6-6 six, six gets the lens, we win with 300 points. Interestingly, we will be taking this lance, taking this knight and dropping a knight here. Uh, that knight and horse together will be able to bring a uh, lot of danger to the king, while they won't be able to do anything. If you're interested in book line, it's something more like this. Um, ending up on simple conclusion that taking this pawn is good, but I really like the computer line, so more aggressive. This is a very useful drop to know in general, if the knight jumps, you don't have a way to defend this lens. Yeah, this silver cannot teleport here, here it would be unprotected and so on. 
Uh, this is why we don't recommend for beginners to use the defensive knight to attack in general as well. So please remember, yeah, very useful bishop. So instead of going uh, aggressive, they're gonna move the silver up. As we said, this pawn will be of our interest, so the silver will be going there to protect it. And they're preparing, yeah, the block of this big diagonal. And they protect the center pawn. So here we go with the floating rook. The main target of us over here would be to dangle our pawn. Like this. And this is why they're gonna protect it. But this variation given by the book is also quite an um, interesting one. They say that after that they can protect with the silver. And we're gonna force pawn versus silver position. After which, if they're gonna attack, we will have this attack on the silver and an amazing bishop drop, this time on the other diagonal. But funnily enough, this is good for yes, yeah, center. Taking this pawn is a mistake and actually this position is still equal. Because if silver goes here, and we chase it away, and we drop the bishop, something that we saw in Ureshino shape will happen, and the bishop uh, will be blocked. So up until here, actually, computer says this is perfectly equal. Now, I, you could also argue whenever this move gives us some benefit or not. Um, technically, it slows down the horse from attacking this lens by one move. Um, computer actually also doesn't like it, but yeah, that's quite interesting. To make it simple, because Gotte doesn't like the idea of this pawn being dangled next to the rook ear, which makes sense, we're gonna protect it by dropping a pawn. So here we're gonna develop our left side knight, and this is beautiful line from the book, very natural, yeah. We develop our rook, develop our knight, really good basics. Uh, they push this pawn because if they don't, we will do the same trick with the gold and then attack the head of the knight, uh, which gonna lead to variation like this. After which, surprisingly, our rook is captured, but actually we're better off after knight jump. If they take the rook, yeah, we can promote our bishop or our knight over there, and technically we should be winning. <laughs> Funnily enough, um, once more, the book isn't 100% correct. The knight promotion is considered a big mistake, preventing the knight jump that gave us the advantage previously is preferred. Quite interesting. Yeah, so the book shows you uh, many variations where Gotha is rushing in, but actually many of those variations, if you keep the balanced mindset, a defend a little, attack a little, it would be better off for study group. This is what we always should consider, yeah? What do I want to do? What the opponent can counter us with? And therefore, what move would be a good preparation for that prior to our attack in this case? On 6-4, defense against knight jump, therefore, is better off. Uh, the book goes to the conclusion that we don't want to allow this, so we push this pawn to allow the silver development. And here we will continue. Finally, left knight uh, of both sides gets developed. Here we are the first one to attack. Uh, silver goes up and we support the knight. They going for the knight jump or they could think of the king escape. In case of king escape, we have an amazing TCG. We should draw by free, threatening to make a horse. But actually, if you take it, we have another fork and this is good for center. So this would immediately enter the middle game and game type of deal. We lose the bishop, but we get two generals. Our left knight, yeah, managed to sabaki, so this is very good for swinging. Um, if they don't move the king, yeah, keeping him to protect this square, this is where this decisive move comes in. Bishop drop h6, and we are set for the attack. If they defend the center additionally, the book recommends to drop the pawn here. Sacrificing the bishop is an overplay because of this move. Even the computer wasn't sure which side is winning here, so basically this would lead to a complex game, yeah, after rook escapes and so on. So it's easier uh, than to sacrifice the bishop, continue like this, and sacrifice the bishop a little bit later in this moment, leading to a threat of silver 7-1. This is the best defense of Gotte trying to counterattack the on the rook while threatening something here, but here an amazing Tetsuji comes in. Silver drop 5-3. 
and we create a dragon with a little bit of material loss, but because their king is so in the open, king safety difference is huge and we're winning. So in more detail, how exactly should we win is they're okay, gonna protect the gold that's hanging right now. We're gonna chase off the rook to the center and the book recommends gold of 6-5 to chase off this bishop, but the computer disagree. They prefer to attack this bishop, force an enemy to drop the silver, and then take the knight. The book variation is the same idea, take the knight as well. I personally like this gold as well because it's next to our king. Things seems a little bit more useful, yeah, defending this promotion as well, making this bishop and this knight useless. So this is plus 600 for center. Uh, the follow-up will be something of uh, like this. We're gonna pick up pieces and with more pieces to play with, we'll be able to treat in this king slowly. So this variation shows us basically uh, what to do when we when our right lens is being pressured by both bishop and knight. I think we show some brilliant counterattacks with uh, bishop drops on those two uh, big diagonals. So those are very important to remember in any Shida formation. We also saw the basic principle of using the left knight to the attack. This is also very important for swinging rook in general. If you're able to activate this knight, you can already assume swinging rook is better. So this concludes the first variation of 1-4 versus pawn 1-6. Next time we're gonna talk about uh, other variation, which is gonna be bishop drop 3-3. And this is gonna prevent us from moving the rook back to 7-8. But more about it in the next video. I will see you there. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.